So this is the old reed mine and it was first established in 1863 and it's one of the earliest mines in the White Mountains. Now they were looking for gold and silver but lead and zinc ore was extracted. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Especially seeing as we're at 10,000 feet, hence the puffing and panting. Now this was abandoned in 1950s and it reverted back to public lands. There's a first cabin here, just a little ways up is the second one. Get a closer look at the log cabin style and the massive gaps that have now formed in between the timbers. Pretty cool. And like we said, we're, we're way up in elevation, so air's thin. It's hard to do the hike. Imagine working in these conditions and the frigid temperatures. It is, um, it is really cold. We woke up this morning, everything was frozen. Water, us, phones, the whole nine yards. And as you can see, we've actually ditched the Nikon because it was so bad. And we're trying an old iPad. So let's see how good this video comes. Now, although these mining cabins are really, really impressive, this isn't the reason why we've come on this particular hike. We've got something even more special. So let's take a look. And at one point, this was the entrance to the mine. It went uh, over 400 feet into the mountain, but it's all uh, collapsed in now. And I think also the Forestry Service did this just to keep people out. So this is what we've come to see. The ancient bristlecone pine forest. These are just absolutely beautiful trees. Aren't they? Like the way it, it's got that twisting and this isn't the most twisted gnarled one that we've seen, but they're like nothing else. Uh-huh. Now, there's lots of things that make these trees extra special. Firstly, they only grow between 9,000 and 11,000 feet above sea level. They have a really bizarre root system. So although this tree looks dead, when the root gets exposed, only that part of the tree dies. The remainder carries on living and most of these trees are 4,000 years old. The oldest they estimate to be 5,000 years old, which is the oldest living non-clonal organism on the planet that we know of. Wow. Pretty amazing, eh? It is. I mean, and they've got just an unbelievable view over yep. the valley and they've been here for 5,000 years. Yep, 5,000 years. Imagine everything that they've been through in their lifetime, the changes, the climate, everything. Nature is incredible. Yep. So, I wonder if there's any more bigger ones up this way. Let's take a look. All right. So these were discovered in 1953 by the researcher Edmund Schalman. And you can see by the trunks, they've been shaped by the wind and snow, which twists and gnarls the trees. Pretty impressive, eh? Now this wood is really, really dense 
and is really resistant to insects and fungus, which helps protect them. Plus, being at this high altitude, there's very limited vegetation, so there's less chance of forest fires. Now, the bristle cone needles are about one inch long and grow in clusters or pockets of five. And when the cones come out, they're deep purple in colour, helping them to absorb the sun's rays and heat. And in two years, they mature and turn brown. Now, the scales are tipped with claw-like bristles, which is how they got their name, bristle cones. True story. Further up the trail, we have come across the upper mining camp. So there's another cabin here. There are a lot of tailing piles up in the distance above. And we've just got a quick question for all of you. What would you prefer? To mine out in the deserts, in the middle of nowhere, in the heat, or up here above 10,000 feet in the frigid cold where there could be up to 10 feet of snow? Let us know by commenting down below. I know my answer. I'd prefer to be in the desert. I deal with the heat a lot better than I deal with the cold. And the altitude. And the altitude. I have uh, some serious issues with altitude. So, we're going to continue on that way to see what else this trail holds. Oh, I wonder how old that heart is. Fun fact about these trees. Did you know that most of these trees were 3,000 years old already before the English language began to evolve? True story. Okay, this is a beautiful, beautiful area. The trees are incredible, and we have been here before uh, a few years ago. Yeah. And it was just as cold and windy. <laughs> so be prepared for that if you guys come up here. And we are in May, um, and we are 
quite cold. Yeah, and there's uh, quite a bit of snow on the ground as well still yeah. in pockets where the sun hasn't melted it. And uh, you've also got to remember that, you know, you're between 9,000 and 11,000 feet in elevation. So you are going to get winded. So if you do decide to do this hike, and we do thoroughly recommend it, there's three or four different hikes that you can do. But, yeah, we've uh, done two and a half of them now. Yeah, but what you do have to remember is take plenty of water with you, take snacks with you, but also go slow and rest often because of the altitude. And it will affect some people more than others. Stephen does get affected really badly with altitude. Um, I got affected, my knee got affected on this hike, uh, so I had to keep stopping to rest my knee. So, uh, but all in all, it's amazing. Definitely worth it. We were going to do this yesterday, but the wind was so horrendous. Uh, we thought today would be better. The wind is starting to pick up a bit, so we might have just done this at perfect timing. Yeah. And on that note, get out there, go and explore, put another pin in the Atlas, and we will see you on our next adventure or on Patreon. And remember, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and remember to ding that notification bell, and that way you won't miss any of our adventures. Bye. Bye.